um, some of tonight's key points that we're going to be going over, um, how youth mentoring connects with this topic. We'll briefly discuss that. Um, we're gonna list some difficult topics. We're gonna talk about preparing for the talking, some conversation starters to help get you going, um, the talks themselves, we're gonna lay out some scenarios for you um, to kind of get your wheels turning and get yourself thinking. We'll give you some ideas for your toolbox of ideas. And then um, at the end, we'll have questions, um, comments, and uh, there's an evaluation at the end. Now, as I said before, I am the Youth Mentoring Coordinator here in Delaware County. And you might be asking yourself, why are you doing this presentation? Um, and so here to talk to you a little bit about how youth mentoring relates to this topic and why we're doing these presentations. I have my colleague to the north, Kathy Schwartzoff is on this call as well. And she is the youth mentoring coordinator up in Howard, Alamakee and Winnesheet counties. So Kathy, take it away. Yeah, thanks Meg. Um, youth mentoring has a really great um, program going um, that we're offering youth between the ages of 6 and 16 in Almakee, Delaware, Howard, and Winnesheet counties, a positive role model. And I'm so, so happy. Meg and I are so happy to see so many mentors with us tonight. We have steering committee members. We have parents of youth. Um, and lots of core, or lots of people that work with youth. You are the people that should be here tonight and know also the value of mentoring. And we do offer mentoring in school-based sites and out in the community, mentors and mentees doing things that they both enjoy. And one of the things that's really unique this year is one of our funders, the Iowa Department of Public Health has asked us to do several trainings throughout the year that are substance abuse prevention or problem gambling related. And that's what this particular um, presentation is about to help you all and to have those conversations that are a little difficult and um, especially those related to substance abuse prevention. And we have 10 goals in youth mentoring. One of them is to maintain or strengthen the youth's ability to refuse to use drugs or to um, be engaged in problem gambling. So that's one of the 10 very important goals that we have working with our youth. And we are very fortunate that as we're doing some of these trainings, there have been people that say, I didn't know this was happening in my county. And here we are. So we really do want you to um, reach out to people you know that are great role models and you yourself consider becoming a mentor for youth because there is always a need and um, we will be having some information at the very ending slide to tell you where to go to get more information and to get yourself either involved as a mentor or we even need kids as well. So we're really glad that you're here tonight and Meg, I'm gonna give you the handoff so that we can get to those um, steak and fries or whatever it is that we're doing tonight because I know the dessert's gonna be good too. You got it, awesome. Thank you so much, Kathy. All right, so yep. yeah, as Kathy said, let's go ahead and get going with the meat and potatoes of this. Um, we are gonna kind of open it up by giving you guys an opportunity um, to share with us. Uh, there is something here called a jam board and this will be my first time using it as well. So we'll kind of walk through it together. But um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that link that's written in blue right there, the HTTPS colon backslash backslash. Um, and we're gonna, Kathy is gonna put that in the chat box. And so if you wanna click right on that link, it'll take you to the Jamboard and I'll go there as well. And once we're on that Jamboard, we're gonna talk about two different questions. The first question being, what topics are you comfortable talking to youth about? 
And the second question is, what topics are uncomfortable to discuss? So I'm going to go to the jam and, board now. And Meg, I typed it in wrong the first time. So please, everybody, look back at that chat box. Um, the second address I put is the correct one. Thanks, Kathy. And again, sorry, I typed. <laughs> yeah, no worries, Kathy. And again, if you're thinking, Meg, I can't even find my chat box, just listen. You'll still get as much out of it. So we're going to try this. Can you all see the jam board on my screen right now? We sure can. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for the feedback. Okay, so we're here on the first page of the Jamboard and the top or the question is um, topics that you are comfortable discussing with youth. So here's how you communicate with me on this device. Over on the left hand side of your screen, there's this really long oval type thing that has little tools in it. The top tool looks like a ballpoint pen, next looks like an eraser, the next one is an arrow, and then the next one down is a little square with the bottom right corner folded up just a little bit. That is your post-it note, and you're gonna click on that post-it note, and it's gonna bring up a sticky note, and you can write in that sticky note, and it'll post it right to the board. And so I see some folks are contributing already, We've got a post-it note that says, I'm comfortable with talking about alcohol and other drugs. And another post-it note says, pets. If you can't figure out the post-it note and you want to use the pen or something and just write something on the board, you can do that as well. Problems at home relationships, looks like we've got some good conversation starters here, school, excellent, friends, very good. Good deal. Parents. <laughs> Those can be quite the topic. <laughs> Very good. And yeah. there, there's, there's someone on the chat or yeah, chat that added, um, I'm not able to use sticky notes. Um, <laughs> I would add goals yeah. to this. And then someone's saying something about tough topics, which we'll get to in a minute. So we'll put those on hold, but we hear you, Ted and Absolutely. June, keep putting in the chat and we'll shout it out. Thank you, Kathy. And yeah, I see another one just got added, planning for future activities. These are all real great, guys. Awesome. So maybe we'll we'll just kind of look at those topics a little bit and some of them are going deep. You know, some of them are talking about this one says I'm comfortable talking about um, alcohol and other drugs. That is awesome. The youth in your life will benefit from that. Um, relationships, planning for future activities, pets. You know, these are all things that um, that you guys find comfortable and that's awesome. Um, and there are a lot of things that you can be comfortable talking to your kids about. Um, and as we all know, those of us that are on this call that are parents, especially parents of older children, um, some of us have had to have some pretty difficult and uncomfortable conversations um, with our kids and other youth. And so now on this second page, uncomfortable topics to discuss with youth. Now is the time for us to put some of those post-it notes up and share some of the conversations that you've had with youth that have been uncomfortable or difficult or stressful. And something that was in the chat of tough topics is suicide and sexuality. Absolutely. 
Those are two of the toughest, I think. Questioning gender identification, mental wellness, self-harm, There's a lot of tough topics out there. I think we could wallpaper this whole <laughs> jam board if we really wanted to. Problems with peers, absolutely. Yes. So, well, thank you for participating um, in that exercise. Yeah, those, those, and just, oh, sorry, go ahead, Kathy. I'm just gonna add one more, how to handle bullies. Oh, absolutely. Yep, and there's another one, drugs and alcohol and gambling, when these aren't apparently a temptation for my mentee. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Absolutely. Yeah, there's all kinds of, of topics out there that, that we could find some awkwardness or some stress discussing with our young people. So I'm gonna get us back to our slideshow. All right, thank you for participating in that. It's, it's so nice to uh, to hear from you guys and, and hear some of the things that you're thinking about as well. All right, so moving on. Now, that's quite an image there, isn't it? Look at all those words. I could find tons of words on there that I um, would find it a little uncomfortable, a little tough to talk to my kids about um, and conversations I have had with my kids. And um, yeah, and all of us have different comfort levels too, you know? Um, some of us are real comfortable talking about things and really nothing is, is off limits to you. And then others blush when you say ding words that, <laughs> that kind of make you squirm a little bit. Um, but just as you uh, protect your kids against illnesses with um, immunizations, you know, when they're little, they get their measles, mumps, and rubella, and all that stuff. Um, we can protect them against uh, drug use by giving them the facts and being honest with them. Uh, and when kids don't feel comfortable talking to their parents about these issues, they seek their information elsewhere. And unfortunately, elsewhere comes along with not so reliable as a, of a source sometimes. Um, the school bus might be where they get their sex ed. And as we all know, that gets a little unreliable. So um, kids who aren't properly informed are at a greater risk of engaging in unsafe behaviors and experimenting with drugs. Uh, parents who are educated about the effects of drug use and learn the facts can give their kids correct information and clear up any misconceptions. You are a role model for your kids and your views on alcohol, tobacco, and drugs can strongly influence how they think about them. Uh, so make talking about drugs a part of your general health and safety conversation. Now, we all know there's absolutely no perfect time where the clouds part and the light shines down and we feel like, oh, this is the perfect moment to bring this up. Um, but instead of sitting around and waiting for the perfect time to talk about a difficult topic, it's up to you to just start that conversation. And it's okay if your first attempts at these conversations are a little unpolished. Um, there might be some um, a surplus of ums or staring at the ceiling or you just get a little uncomfortable. There may be some long pauses um, and but also just be prepared for blank stares that you're going to get from your kids as sometimes they may not um, 
be 100% ready to have these conversations or um, they may not have seen it coming and they could really uh, knock them off their feet. Uh, some kids also take a while to digest information. Some kids ask a million questions um, and others may not be phased by it at all. The important thing is that you've opened up the conversation and you've made the first step. Now your family is unique and the thoughts and beliefs that you hold will influence how you talk to your child. The reasons behind a decision um, or the lessons you hope to instill will vary from family to family. Plus each child is unique. Uh, some children are very mature for their age while others seem to grow up more slowly. Uh, the way you talk to a three-year-old is gonna look a lot different than the way you talk to a 10-year-old. So it's, it all kind of varies. Some conversation starters. So how do we get these conversations started? Um, first of all, you could use something that you saw or heard about. Um, and you could use situa situations from all around you. So like this says, you could be walking through a park and you could see a kid vaping or an adult vaping. Um, and you could say, hey, you know, did you see that person in the park? Um, they were vaping. What do you know about that? Um, get it out in, in, into the open. Tell them that, hey, I've got something that I want to talk to you about or be more specific. I really wanna to talk to you about the vaping that we saw in the park today, or I'd really like to talk to you about alcohol use or whatever the topic is. Um, or a really great launching pad for a conversation might even just be this presentation. And you could say, hey, Junior, did you know that last night I went to this presentation um, about talking to kids about difficult topics? Can I talk to you about some of the stuff I heard? Um, and another thing you could do is just to seek their knowledge or help. You know, I'm curious, is there a lot of drug use at your school? Ask them what they know. Um, do you have a couple of minutes to talk? So those are all kind of good ways to get started anyways. Uh, sometimes talking about a difficult topic will stir up emotions and you don't have to hide your emotions. It's okay for your kids to see you sad or cry. Um, and it's actually a great learning point for them. It's okay to look at them and say, you know, I'm really having a hard time with this. I'm really struggling. Um, if you think that your child might be worried or upset by your tears or your sadness, um, you can set a good example by just telling them, you know, it's okay um, we all have these feelings, we all have emotions, we all have bad days, and that doesn't exclude you just because you're mom, or just because you're dad, or because you're a mentor. We all have feelings, and, and it's okay to let them show. Uh, regardless of your child's age, it's important to reassure them, above all, that they are healthy and safe and loved. If you're stumped for anything to say, and you get those three things out, you're doing a great job. Uh, depending on the situation, kids may not need all of the specifics. Answer questions and address concerns that pertain to the child directly. Um, and also uh, something that's important to remember is your child depends on you. You do not depend on your child. So if you are struggling with big emotions, um, with big upset, big sadness, find another trusted adult um, or a friend or a support group for you to lean on. Don't lean on your children. So are we ready to step into the blurry and confusing world of talking to kids about difficult topics? Uh, you don't have to say the perfect thing. You don't have to have the perfect time. You just have to get it started. So we're going to get started with our first scenario here. Um, and so this lady leaning over her laundry basket is a bit puzzled and you're going to find out why. So it's laundry day and you go to your son's backpack to pull out his dirty track uniform and you find a little plastic bag tucked in his track hoodie. 
The bag is filled with clumps that look like grass clippings, but you know it's not grass clippings. How do you address substance use? And how you address substance use is gonna look a lot different depending on the age of your child. We're gonna talk about three different age groups today, uh, preschool through the age seven. We're gonna talk about tweenagers, I hear that's the new term that they prefer to be called, between eight to 12, and um, teenagers, 13 to 17 year olds. So first we're gonna look at the preschool age. Um, so educate your child about helpful and harmful uses for medicine. And a way you can do that is whenever your kiddo is sick and you have to give them medicine to make them better or an antibiotic or anything like that, you can kind of open that conversation up with explaining to them why you're giving them that medication and how it's helping their body. You can use teachable moments when you see people on TV or in public drinking or smoking, you can take that opportunity to discuss the effects that it might have on their body and how your family views these behaviors. Always stay calm when talking about these topics with your children and be sure not to talk over their heads. You know, they're just little people. So just give them what they can handle. Repetition. Keep the conversations rolling about substance use. We all learn better when we hear things more than once. Figure out what they know. Um, ask them questions. Um, ask them what they know about different, different topics. And they might know more than you think that they know. Um, but again, let them steer the conversation for a while and be a part of it. Keep it simple. Do not overreach their age. And lastly, if they have questions about um, drugs um, or substance use of any kind, uh, give it to them. Teenagers. So, teenagers, begin conversations by simply asking them what they know. Again, they may know more than you think. Be an engaging listener. Give them your undivided attention and make good eye contact. Don't be distracted on your phone or, um, you know, maybe you're doing dishes or something. If they ask you a, um, an impertinent question, stop what you're doing and really engage in what they're saying. Start the dialogue by, um, by beginning these conversations now. You're opening the door for your children to freely share their thoughts with you and their opinions plant the seeds. Even if your comments don't kickstart a lively conversation, you're at least planting some seeds in their minds to be thinking about. Keep an open door policy. This is an important one. Be ready and available to talk to your kids about topics like this. I know I myself am horribly guilty about just a second, just a second, you know, give me a second. I just need to finish this. Um, and we need to not not do that. When they ask us really important questions like this, it's important to, to stop what you're doing and, and answer their questions and talk to them. There are lots of things in the news uh, going on in the world that you could use for an open discussion. A good example might be uh, professional athletes who use steroids to make their muscles bigger and to participate better in their sports and um, you can talk to them about the effects on the body and why this is not right. And there's a, there's a lot of different rabbit trails you can take with, with that, even with dishonesty and, um, and uh, just making bad choices in general. And use gentle correction. If your child is talking to you and they share inaccurate information with you, be gentle when you correct them. There's a lot of false information floating around out there and they may come across it. Moving on to teenagers. Uh, kids at this age, unfortunately, will probably have either seen or heard of other kids their age uh, drinking or using drugs. Many teenagers are still comfortable 
uh, opening up to their parents and sharing their thoughts and concerns and use these opportunities to ask them questions and keep them talking. As talking with teenagers, you can bring um, legal talk into, into these conversations, discuss the legal issues, talk about the dangers of driving under the influence um, of drugs or alcohol and the consequence of jail times and fines and even the possibility that they could endanger their life or the life of someone else. Putting it in writing might be an option that you would think about doing. Um, you might want to consider creating a contract or a written agreement about the use of the vehicle. You can make it clear to them that you, even in the wee hours of the morning, will always pick them up if they call you or text you because the driver has been drinking or using drugs, uh, this goes for any time they need to be picked up in an uncomfortable situation. Um, and that just a, an idea, I have a teenage son and um, he has started going places um, on his own for long periods of time with buddies and they may not always have it, um, you know, real careful parental supervision like we did when they were really small. And, you know, I had a conversation with him and I told him that, you know, buddy, if you're ever in an uncomfortable situation and you want me to come get you, um, you know, all you have to do is shoot me a quick text and I'll be there and I won't ask questions. I'll come pick you up and get you out of a bad situation. And um, feel free to always use mom as a scapegoat. If you need out of a situation, I can help. So especially right now, while he's not of a driving age and they still might need someone to come pick them up, um, just something to keep in the back of your mind. Be clear and set expectations and be com completely upfront with your children about how you expect them to behave and what your family rules are. And lastly, Learn the lingo, know how kids talk about the drugs and the alcohol. They may be talking about it right under your nose if you don't know the verbiage they're using. Um, and just stay up to date on, on uh, how, they're, how they think about these situations. Okay, so the previous slides that we all looked at um, were focused on the preventative measures, you know, how to talk to your kids about not doing these things. But what if like in the scenario, you come across something and realize that your child is already using, um, you know, this can be very devastating to a parent, it can completely um, disrupt the family and break trust and, um, and so on the following slides, we're going to cover some foundational steps for controlling the damage and reaching the heart of your child. So unity is key. These steps are all very important. Um, in the heat of battle, your sweet, adorable, wonderful children will try to turn you against your spouse. They're gonna try to play you off one another. Um, and in this situation, in order to be successful, you must remain unified. Being on the same team is an absolute must. Don't waste time playing the blame game. In most situations, it is not a parent's fault when a child decides to use illegal substances. Agree before you confront your child on the position you're going to take together. Make your expectations clear. Present a united front. Even if you disagree behind the scenes when it's time to speak to Junior about their usage, you must show them that you're on the same team. Make a promise to one another that you will not bash or undermine each other and remind each other of how much you love your child. And it's from that place of love that you're going to have to make some hard decisions together. So be prepared to be called a hypocrite. Ouch. That's a trigger word. Don't take the bait. If you vape or use tobacco or drink alcohol, your child is going to call you out on it. Um, you need to explain to them how you're an adult 
um, and it is completely legal for you to use these substances, but you understand that too much of any substance is unhealthy, highlight how hard it is to stop as an adult and emphasize that you don't want them to make the same mistakes that you made and make it clear that the discussion is about them and not you. <laughs> Um, and then after your discussion is over, it might be time to think about making some changes in your own life. Um, and if you are interested in making some changes and you need help, um, yourlifeiowa.org is an excellent resource that you could turn to. Um, that's a one-stop informational hub that the Iowa Department of Public Health has put together. And if anyone on this call would like more information about Your Life Iowa, um, you can contact me after this presentation and I would be happy to put some resources in your hands. So it's going to feel a little bit awkward as you're rifling through your child's belongings. But remember, as their parent, it's one of your primary jobs to protect them and keep them safe from harm. So, um, there are some places that are uh, key hiding places that kids might use to hide their stash or their drugs or um, their alcohol, whatever it is that they're hiding in a desk or dresser drawers, uh, hidden in clothing, tucked inside the clothing or in boxes, in jewelry boxes, in backpacks, purses or gym bags, under their bed, uh, even in house plants, they can bury things in the dirt and that way I, I wouldn't have thought to look in the dirt of a house plant. That's a pretty good hiding place. Um, and in containers that can conceal, sometimes they empty out um, chapstick or lipstick tubes. Um, so it's an empty tube and they can fit pills in there or a joint, whatever it is that they're trying to hide empty soda cans, empty potato chip bags, um, or even inside over-the-counter medicine containers, a Tylenol bo bottle, um, an Advil bottle, something like that. They could use that to conceal what it is that they're trying to hide. Expect anger, but do not give it in return. They are going to feel as if you've invaded their privacy and that you don't trust them. Um, they may lash out at you or say hurtful things, but you have to resolve to remain calm even before you enter the discussion with them, no matter how hard they push at you. Try not to be baited into saying hurtful things in return. And if the conversation does become too heated, as I'm sure sometimes that happens, time to push pause, take a step back, breathe, um, and take a moment to regain your composure before you re-enter the conversation. But most importantly, above all, um, try to diffuse their anger with love. Just to remind them how much you love them um, and how much you care about them and you are looking out for their best interest. Establish clear rules and consequences. Before you even begin the conversation, have a clear idea of the rules and the consequences that you want to establish in your home. And be sure your spouse is on the same page and that you're playing on the same team. During the confrontation, listen to your children's feedback. Now, this is a hard part. You know, we work so hard to try to think of the right things to say, just the right thing that'll make that impact with them but we need to stop thinking about that for a second and actually let them speak and listen when they give us feedback. Uh, give them some space to help you create the game plan for how things are gonna look moving forward. And they may be more likely to comply with rules that they had a part in helping create. Um, and very importantly, do not set consequences for your child that you know in the back of your head you're never going to follow through on. If there's something really huge that you want to take away, um, but you know you just can never quite do that, don't threaten to take it away then. Um, because empty promises are not going to shape their bad behaviors. 
um, it's just going to show them that you're a pushover and you, you're not going to follow through on what you say. Family history of addiction puts your child at a greater risk of substance use disorder. Um, and this would create an even bigger reason for them to avoid trying substances in the first place. No parent, child, or family is immune to the effects of drugs. Any kid can end up in trouble, um, even those who have made an effort to avoid getting in trouble and those who had the best parents who knew just what to say and had just the right timing, sometimes they still get in trouble. However, certain groups of kids may be more likely to use drugs than others. Kids who have friends who use drugs are likely to try drugs. Um, those feeling socially isolated for whatever reason might turn to drugs to fill that void. So it's important to know your child's friends and their parents involved in your children's lives. And if your child's school runs an anti-drug program, get involved. Pay attention to how your kids are feeling and let them know that you're available and willing to listen in a non-judgmental way. Recognize when your kids are going through difficult times so that you can provide support and seek additional care if that's needed. Uh, Role-playing can help your child develop strategies to turn down drugs if they're offered. You guys could act out possible scenarios together that they might encounter helping them construct phrases and responses that they might use um, when confronted with a temptation or some pressure from friends, um, something that rolls off their tongue naturally. Um, and um, bottom line, a warm, open family environment where kids can talk about their feelings, where their achievements are praised, and where their self-esteem is boosted uh, encourages kids to come forward with their questions and concerns. And when kids um, are censored a lot in their own homes, then they like to look elsewhere for their support and their answers, even to the most important questions. Uh, so make talking and having conversations with your kids a regular part of your day. Finding time to do things that you enjoy together as a family helps everyone stay together and promotes um, good conversation and good communication. Okay, so we're gonna move on to another scenario. We're done talking about substance abuse for a little bit here. Scenario number two, imagine if your daughter comes home from a friend's house where they have been swimming in her pool. She begins to talk to you about how she feels so fat and she hates the way her body looks compared to other people. How do you address poor body image? So our society um, is fixated on beauty and youth, uh, but body image doesn't just affect girls. That's kind of a common myth that I'd like to deflate. Boys also struggle with body image. Um, so we ask the question, what is a healthy body image and how can we nurture it in our sons and daughters? something we could do is sympathize. Not many of us have felt uh, completely satisfied with our bodies at every stage of life. If you have, I'd like to shake your hand because I think that's a pretty amazing accomplishment. Um, explain to your kids that you have suffered too. You've been standing right where they've been standing um, and you didn't let it consume your life or keep you from doing the things you wanted to do or um, being what you wanted to be. Model body comfort. If parents are wrapped up in anxiety about their bodies, it's gonna rub off on their kids. Uh, parents need to model body comfort, acceptance, and appreciation for their bodies and what their bodies allow them to do. Our kids' body image is directly related to our own. And this also includes nutrition. Um, we can encourage our kids to eat a healthy diet and to eat nutritionally, 
but we need to do so without making them feel horrible for enjoying that cookie or bowl of ice cream. You know, how many times have we sat at a table eating dessert, especially us ladies, and we we say, oh, you know what? This ice cream is going to go right to my thighs. (laughs) And so it's comments like that that, you know, they're listening when you talk, and that's showing um, poor body image of yourself. And listen, dad, this is a powerful one. Um, Dads make a huge difference in the lives of their sons, but also, um, especially little girls, need to hear positive feedback from their fathers about their beauty and their other wonderful attributes that they have. It's also important for boys and girls to see their dads um, complimenting their mother um, and appreciating her for all that she is. Uh, A young man will learn a lot about how to treat his future wife by watching dear old old dad and how he treats their mother. So that's something, dad, you guys are being watched big time. Avoid sexualizing children at all costs. Um, As parents, we must shield our sons and daughters from this highly sexualized pop culture that our kids live in right now. Um, This includes TV programs, movies, um, advertising, music, music, um, even what they're reading sometimes, it's just not appropriate. Our culture is saturated in this influence and we must be aware of our children's exposure to it. Um, We don't watch much Uh, sporting events on television in my family. Uh, But every year we do try to sit down with the kids and watch the Super Bowl. And there's been so many instances where Chris and I are just diving for the remote because some commercials come on and there's this person that's half naked standing in the commercial and our kids are watching. It's just everywhere. And you have to be very um, vigilant about protecting them. Um, And when our children do come across highly sexualized material, it's important that we, as their parents, address how sad it is that the person on the commercial is so concerned about their body um, and draw attention to things that hold far more value, um, things like person's character, their heart, or their mind. We need to move that bod. (laughs) Emotion is lotion. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. Um, When we want, we want our children to be able to view their bodies as strong and capable of many things. And exercise is a key factor in helping them appreciate their bodies. Um, It's a, it's great for the mood, the good mood booster, and it also lessens stress and anxiety. Um, And it's um, more easily replicated if uh, your parents the parents are setting a good example by also being active. And just to throw this out here, another great form of exercise for children is chores. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, so get your kids out there in the garden weeding, get them mowing the lawn, give them a rag and ask them to scrub the kitchen floor. Um, All of these things are great exercise. And when a child is contributing to their family in this manner, Um, It also builds character. So double whammy, take that one to the bank. Set clothing limitations. Uh, This is especially important for our daughters. We need to be cautious about the provocativeness of their clothing. Provocative clothing brings certain reactions from the opposite sex that are not age appropriate. Um, And when girls get a lot of attention for the way that they dress, they begin to seek their value in how other people perceive them in that way. Uh, Clothing discussions can also be, excuse me, a way to discuss the values in your family. Um, For instance, do the males in your family take ball caps off during mealtime or when the national anthem is being played or when someone is praying, do they take their hats off? Is it important to you that your little girl's swimsuit covers a certain percentage of her body? 
Um, these are all good talking points. And some folks might throw out the argument that, oh man, you know, parenting is hard. Do we really, you know, we have to choose our battles. But this battle goes a little beyond um, wearing a warm enough jacket when you're outside or wearing navy blue shorts with a black t-shirt. I'm thinking of my son, Ben, who does that all the time. I just don't understand it, but I've given up. But this is not one of those battles. When your children are dressing provocatively, it's time to have a discussion and to say no. Okay, so we're on to our last scenario here. And we've got about 10 minutes left. So um, the last scenario is your son tells you about a time when he and his friends were driving home from a basketball game and his friends were encouraging him to do a burnout beside an elderly couple that was driving very slowly. When he refused to do so, they made fun of him and called him names. How do you as a parent address peer pressure? So peer pressure, take a deep breath because this one's everywhere. Don't overreact at what they're saying. They may tell you things that are going to upset you. Um, if you blow a gasket over what they're confiding in you, you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot and they're not gonna want to confide in you next time. Um, so it's important to stay calm, take a deep breath, avoid yelling, blaming, scolding. Um, instead, talk about consequences. Um, what's going to happen to them if they engage in these activities? Talk about true friendship. Help them to understand that if their friends are pressuring them to do inappropriate or dangerous things and then shaming them when they don't, maybe this isn't the best crowd for them to surround themselves with. Get to know your child's friends. Have them to your home. Open up your refrigerator to them. Nothing opens up a teenage boy like a Jack's frozen pizza. Get the pizzas out, put them in the oven, and you'll be surprised by how many kids start sitting around your table, spilling their guts about what's going on at school. Um, talk about the meaning of independence. Kids want independence. It's exciting to them. Um, help them to realize that if they're seeking independence, then why would they let some other kid dictate their actions? Let them practice how to say no. Help them to come up with simple ways to say no that they're comfortable with. And lastly, and I think as parents, we're all pretty good at this one, model saying no. Um, set clear expectations and limits for your kids. And when you tell them no, you don't have to explain it for 10 minutes after why, afterwards why you said no. Um, make it clean, make it simple, and they will realize that they will be able to do the same thing. Uh, so just a couple helpful resources um, for you all moving forward. I talked to you about Your Life Iowa, which is an excellent resource by the Iowa Department of Public Health. The website is right there at the top. Um, there's also talktokids.org. And SAMHSA.gov also has um, some great information about Talk They Hear You. And we're gonna check out a video real quick. Um, and it has a video, um, it's a video um, from SAMHSA, from Talk They Hear You. Okay, can you all see a black screen now? I get some feedback? Yeah. Okay, moving forward. If you're talking, they will hear you every single time. Allow the words to break through by seeing eye to eye. We all mean something special to each other's lives. So talk, they hear you, and you can do it if you try. It's all right, man. We're good next time. Hey, good to see you. Yeah. Take care, okay? Bye. Bye. Hey, pal. 
Okay. It's a tough game. Yeah. You guys really needed Kyle today. Where was he? It's complicated. Come on, Tim, let's go. Just a sec. OK, if I go over to Jake's for a while, we're going to eat lunch and then hang out. Yeah, sure. Your sister's still at her sleepover for the day. We're getting here at 5, and then we'll come and get you afterwards, OK? All right, cool. All right, come here. Bye. See ya. So you know why Kyle wasn't there today? He's kicked off the team. What? Yeah. Got caught drinking alcohol in the park a couple nights ago with some other kids. Did Tim tell you that? No, I heard it from Rick just now at the game. Wow. Do you think Tim's drinking too? I don't know. I hope not. Yeah, but we never really told him what we expect. I know, but what do we expect? I mean, kids try it at this age. Some kids, but that doesn't mean that we should just assume or wait for it to happen with ours, does it? No, of course not. I just can't believe we have to have this conversation at his age. We probably should have had it a lot sooner. And not just one talk, but every time there's a chance to discuss it. You know, just reinforce what we expect. Yeah. We'll definitely do that with Katie. And with Tim. I mean, this situation with Kyle is the perfect opportunity. I think if you talk to him, he'd listen. Where's Mom and Katie? Mom's picking her up. I wanted to get you so we could talk about something. What'd I do? I'm not sure. That's why I wanted to talk. I heard about Kyle and why he's off the team. Yeah? Mom and I were surprised. We hadn't really been thinking about kids your age starting to try alcohol. Have you tried it? No. I mean, I've been around kids that have, like Kyle. I mean, I don't know. Well, here's the thing. We realized today we haven't really been clear about alcohol and what we expect. It's really important to us that you do not drink alcohol. Mm, okay. There are a lot of reasons why. Most important is, is that we care about you. At your age, alcohol can damage your brain development. It messes with your judgment, so you can end up doing dangerous, risky, or just plain stupid and embarrassing things. And there are consequences. At school, on your teams, look at Kyle. Yeah, I get it. Good. We also know it can be hard to turn down alcohol if your friends are drinking. But all you have to do is say, no thanks, it's not my thing. You've got so much going for you, Tim. You don't need it. And your real friends aren't going to care if you don't drink. No thanks, it's not my thing. I can do that. I'm proud of you, Tim. Your mom and I are here for you anytime you have questions or need help. With this or anything else. Thanks, Dad. Okay, we'll get back to the PowerPoint here. Okay, can everybody see the PowerPoint again? Okay, um, so yeah, wasn't that kid adorable? I love that video. He's such a cute little guy. Um, yeah, so um, in conclusion, you know, we just kind of want to encourage you to start these conversations. And once you start them, keep them rolling and keep talking to your kids, even in really tricky circumstances. 
Um, just to highlight an upcoming training that we're going to be having, uh, Kathy is going to be presenting on alcohol trends in Northeast Iowa on Thursday, June 24th from noon to one. It's a lunch and learn. Um, so you can eat your lunch and listen to some great information. You can join her virtually and we'll get you some more information um, about that if you would like to uh, join that presentation. And uh, now is the time that we can open it up to questions and comments. There is Kathy's information and my information. If you have questions you're not comfortable asking um, over Zoom right now, uh, but also there in the blue is a link to complete an evaluation about this presentation. And Kathy, would you mind please putting it in the chat box so people can copy it down from there as well? Um, and uh, also, if you would like to be a mentor, uh, feel free to contact us as well, and we'd be happy to bring you on board. So I would just want to thank everyone so much for coming this evening and um, open it up if you have any questions or comments you'd like to share. And if you don't have any questions or comments, that's just fine. Um, and I'll leave this page up for a little bit so you can write down the link to the evaluation. And I appreciate your time and thank you for joining me tonight. Everybody have a wonderful evening.